Tonight, for the first time, a thrill seeker sharing a story of survival. About a month ago, we first reported the parrot motor pilot from Paw Paw who was in critical condition after a crash landing. News 8's Jacqueline Francis was on the scene the night it happened and met up with the pilot today to talk about his miraculous recovery. Jacqueline? Today, I learned Doug Martin is as resilient as he is adventurous, crediting his survival to first responders and family. It's called a pilot's glory. A pilot's glory is the reflection of you coming off the clouds. A view few dare to experience. Holy this is beautiful. That's one of my favorite things about paramotors. From takeoff to landing, paramotoring is said to be the simplest form of flight. I always laugh and say, I'm riding a lawn chair with a fan and a big wing over my head, and that's really all it is. In just two years, Doug Martin has logged hundreds of hours in the air, live streaming his flights, recording the highs and lows. Whoa, that was scary. I don't know that was. I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to figure out why. And I doubt I'll figure out why. Um, there is no reason in the world, as hard as I hit that ice, I should be gone. Um, for some reason, <clears throat> One really bad incident had a whole bunch of really good incidents to follow it. It all started on Valentine's Day as Doug was out for an afternoon flight near Lake Ackley in Paw Paw. He still can't pinpoint exactly what went wrong. His only memory of the crash comes from watching the video. Oh, there's no doubt that your heart just drops. When I watch the video and I can actually what I can tell what I'm doing. In the video, a guy had my hands up. I can see it starting to go into a dive. Falling from 250 feet above, he crashed feet first into the iced over lake, going about 50 miles an hour. I punched through it and actually hit the ground. Um, and then I got stuck between the ice and the ground for a while. A nearby stranger would be the first to his rescue. I had an angel named Brad who made his he literally saw me starting to spin, and he had enough fortitude to follow up to the lake, and he's the one that actually got my head above water. He'd spend the next few days in a medically induced coma, as doctors tended to his injuries, spanning head to toe, from a broken skull to shattered heels. It'd be a month before Doug would return home from the hospital, getting released just last week. First fractured L4, my very brain in the back, and that's what my brace is all for. On the brink of 50, Doug still has a lot more life to live, seeing the crash as a speed bump and a reminder to live out his next adventures with slightly more caution. I have lots of things left to do in life. Um, I'm going to go back to 100% and then start doing those things again. The Good Samaritan who saved Doug's life has turned out to be more of a humble hero, respectfully declining the spotlight when asked for interviews or to receive a life-saving award from local police. However, Doug says his rescuer does check in on him often and they look forward to spending more time together in the future. Reporting in studio, Jacqueline Francis, News 8.